Hello everybody, today I want to talk about how to flash your OpenTX radio because most people whenever I talk about flashing things go into panic mode and think uh oh I'm gonna I'm gonna break the radio I'm gonna break it it's not worth doing now as far as flashing stuff goes I would say you know if your radio is working fine everything's good there's no real reason to touch it the only reason I really upgrade radio is if there's a feature I need on a later version, which is often the case if you've got sort of a new module you want to put in or something, or if there's a bug in the initial firmware you want that fixed, and sometimes it's the case if you, you'd put the same firmware on but you'd add another feature in. And what I mean by that, we kind of looked at this last time, if I go into the radio setup, one of the things I showed before is what um, features were compiled in. This is OpenTX234 for OpenTX T12. And if we look at the firmware options, we can see Crossfire, International MultiPlus, Multimodule, Lua, Lua C. And one of the things I, I was missing when I reviewed this radio was the, something called R, what's it called, Flex R9M, which is the Flex firmware with R9, that was missing. So I could flash this with the same version of 234, but just include that option. What I'm going to do is, is flash it with a new version of the firmware and just show you what OpenTX Companion has to offer. Because one of the things about flashing OpenTX radios is they're not like flashing anything else. The software is extremely friendly, the flashing is quick and easy and sort of nothing to be afraid with. It's a case of really plugging in the USB, clicking a few uh, buttons and you're good to go. So before you do start, it is important to work out what firmware you've got on it. Often the firmware is a case of knowing what radio it is. This is a Jumper T12 Pro, you might have an X9D, an X7, etc, etc. The OpenTX Companion firmware will know all about it. So just make sure you know what, what radio you have, what version of the firmware you had, and what firmware options you had, because you probably want to at least include those. So. Before we go to the computer, what we have to do is turn it on in the bootloader mode before we plug it in. To do this, uh, on most radios, you just hold two trim tabs in and power it on. And then you get the bootloader menu. So let's go plug this in the computer. It will just say USB connected and I'll go through what needs to happen next. Before we get going, we need to actually get hold of this OpenTX companion software, which they talk about here. To get it, um, you can get the version that is based on your firmware you've got. I've got 234, but I'm going to upgrade to the latest anyway because it shouldn't have a problem. Uh, you've got Windows, Mac and, and Linux here. I'm running Mac. I guess a lot of you guys are going to be running Windows. Thing is the same. Just download it, uh, run the install and then you're good to go. So let's get this installed and we'll run it. Okay, so this is the OpenTX Companion software. Looks all a bit confusing to start with, lots of icons. But it's pretty good once you understand the basics of what's going on here. So I've plugged my radio in and I've used this software before. So if I look under my radio profiles, I've got a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but what I haven't, I haven't done one for my current radio and this is always recommended because every time you need to do an update it will just know what you want on your radio and offer you the latest update. So if we add a radio profile and this is where you choose the radio you've got. Yours should be in the list somewhere if you're running OpenTX. I've got the Jumper T12 Pro here, so I'm gonna use this one. And this is where we come back to, oh, what options do we have uh, available there? And we had uh, Lua, uh, the Lua scripts, and we had International Multi. Now, you'll notice there's no Crossfire here. I, I don't know if this is because Crossfire is now something that's built in and it's part of the Lua script or, or something like that, but there you go. So there's a couple of other options I might mess around with here. As I mentioned, I wanted Flex R9M, so I'm going to add that. We've got this thing called SQT5 font. This is an alternative to the default font, so I might just pop that in just to try it. There's one called No Heli. This gets rid of that um, heli mixing screen. If you're never going to fly heli, uh, you might as well tick that because you probably won't want it. The only other thing people probably interested in is this thing called PPM US. If you remember from last time, I showed you where you could sort of look at what your stick's doing and it sort of went from minus 100 at one end to zero in the middle and then to plus 100. If you change this to PPM US, this will tell you that 
figure in U6. So at that point, you're probably a thousand at one end, fifteen hundred in the middle, and about two thousand at the end. Um, it just depends which one you want. I'm I'm going to go with this. Now uh, a splash screen. It's, if you notice when we turn the radio on, it comes up and says Open TX. If you want to customize this for yourself, you can put your own little splash screen there. Uh, there are many pre-done ones, most of them sort of for the X9D, so may need a little bit of messing about with. If you want to create your own, just check out what the dimensions of your screen are, check out how many grayscales it can handle. For me, I have one I'd prepared earlier, which looks like this. It's a, a basic little two-color bitmap. Um, and the only other thing I might change is my default channel order because mine is AETR. Uh, and that looks pretty good there. So I'm going to say OK there. Now, just before we go ahead and talk about how to update the firmware, you probably want to think about, oh, what if I want to back stuff up? You certainly can do. There's a thing here. Whenever you've got the arrows pointed away, that means it's copying from, and when the little red arrows going to it means it's writing so this one here will write the backup of your models to the radio I call that t12 pro backup dot bin this one down here it will basically read the firmware from your radio so you can put that back exactly the way you wanted to now the models you can actually do stuff with so I could go back and open that backup file I had there and it would show me my models and once I've got these I can if I double click on it I can go through and I can make changes there and I can write that back to the radio if I want to similarly instead of downloading that file to a disk and opening it I can read what's on my radio directly and it will just show me here. You see that's that eight in uh, red there because it's a, a shared value. Um, I don't particularly like doing this. You've got to simulate the radio as well so you can do things and it's like, oh, throttle's not idle, press button, your switches are on, turn these off and yeah, so, sort of stuff. I, I don't particularly like it and I don't like editing things on here because I would much rather know how to do them on the radio because if I'm out in the field I don't want to get used to this because I, I need to know how to do them there and then on the spot. So having backed up your radio and I would always suggest that this is where you can go ahead and talk about writing some software. So the first thing we want to do is download some new software. Actually the first time you, you ever open this it will always prompt to say if there's some new stuff so you can easily get it and what it's doing is saying so your firmware is OpenTX and it lists all my options here so it says latest download unknown I haven't got it yet so if I check for updates it will say you've never downloaded it but we've got 237 do you want that and we say yes please and it'll prompt me to save it and you can actually configure this to say do you want to write that firmware now but we can do it in two steps so we now say write firmware to radio and it's picked up that file I've just downloaded. It's got the version there. It's got the date and time. And it's saying, do you want to use this profile start screen you uh, you use? And I'm like, yeah, I like that. And then we just say write to TX. And it's that quick. It's incredibly quick. So if you're watching last time about how to configure the SD card, you will know that the first time we turn this radio on, it's going to beep and say we've got an unexpected version because we haven't updated our SD card content. So don't forget to go back and pick up that SD card content for your new version of the firmware. It's going to be probably very similar. As you see, this is 237 and we used 230025 before. This is just one tiny difference. So I'll go ahead and grab that one, install it on the SD card and then we'll take a look and see what's different on the radio. Okay, so new firmware loaded on, new SD card image loaded on. Welcome to OpenTX. And now we've got a little splash screen, which is cool. So the obvious things to check here, if we go into the radio options, one thing, and I check this out, the tools menu is now the first thing you see, which kind of makes sense if you're going into running these tools. That was a change in I think 236. But we can go along and we can find that our settings 
have it's gone to 237 there and our firmware options are as we expect them to be um, we see we've got the no heli screen Crossfire is just there, as I thought it might be, and we got the Flex R9M, as we wanted. One thing I did know is that that alternative font doesn't seem to be here. I don't know if this is a problem with the jumper. I've had it on other radios before. I'll show you an image here, but not on this one. So I can double check things are, are looking good. If I go into R9M, if you saw on my original review, I just had EU and FCC. Now I have the option to run 868 and if I hit return there it's going to say it requires flex non-certified firmware. That's all good. The other thing um, I wanted to do is get rid of a couple of screens like the heli screen. So if I go through here now you will notice I don't have that heli setup screen. I've just got the bits I want which is still 12 screens worth so it's not exactly a small amount. So there you go, that's the idea about how you update the firmware on your radio. As I said before though, I wouldn't necessarily do it unless there was something that I needed on a particular version of OpenTX, or there was a feature I needed, or something that had a bug in it. So happy flashing, and I'll see you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.